Thanks, George. Well, George has introduced me, so I'll just kick off. I'm just going to give you a bit of an update on the Digifarm project, which we're running at the moment. Um, Digifarm is part of this, is a, it's a federal, federally funded program that's part of the Smarter Farming Initiative um, that's run through the National Land Care Program. And uh, probably two years ago, now Northwest Local Land Services and the University of Sydney put in an application for that project and we were successful with that. So we're currently running 13 sites across the Northwest region with that. And these are very, these are run on commercial properties, these project sites. So it's very much about getting that commercial end of, of data where we can and really seeing how these things interact in the real world. So this is a, a map showing the current sites that we have at the moment. Um, I'm going to talk to you, oh, sorry. I'm going to talk to you today about our OptiWay site. So we have one in Bogabri here, one up with, um, at Ron Ison's at Malls Creek and down at Werris Creek. You can see most of the spread of our project sites have been down in more of the northeastern and eastern part of the region. We're just in the final stage of, stages of getting a sheep EID project, um, two of those running out at Walgett. And we're also going to be looking to move an OptiWay out towards the western regions as well. So we're really interested to see how this technology for livestock can work within the different parts of our regions and different production systems. I've got a video here. This is some footage that we took on the day and we had um, Bill, who is the developer of OptiWay, come out to our Moores Creek site and set up the OptiWay with our landholder Ron Ison. So we just had a bit of a chat to them about what the OptiWay is, why it was developed, and then from Ron's perspective, why he's participating in the project. So I'll play that for you now and it'll give you a nice overview and you'll get to see the unit for those of you that haven't seen it before. So OptiWay systems are a system for weighing cattle in the paddock. Uh, that doesn't require trapping them or forcing them to walk over something and is, is portable and can be moved from mob to mob very easily and quickly. I'm Bill Mitchell, I'm a, I'm a beef farmer from near Armidale in New South Wales and I'm the founder of OptiWay. The benefits really fall into three categories and, and the first one is, is not having to yard the cattle to weigh them. So from what we've seen that, that costs anywhere between 2 and even 10% in, in weight just to do that and, and that weight's not quickly recovered if at all. And it also takes a lot of time and, and labour and for that reason people aren't able to gather weights as often as they'd like to. So there's a real benefit there. Secondly, it's, it's about um, looking at changes in weight gain trends over time and being able to pick up what's happening in the paddock earlier so that action can be taken. And thirdly, it's about meeting market specifications. So yeah, not having to get the cattle in and weigh them, just to book them in. Not booking them in on guesswork, being able to uh, meet your target weights without, without incurring penalties by going over. So just having the information that you need to make sure you're maximising the return from every load of cattle that leaves the property. I'm Ron Ison, um, Fassel Fund here at Malls Creek. Uh, um, run this property in conjunction with my wife Jill. We're EU accredited. We uh, have had a self-replacing shorthorn herd in recent years, but uh, we sold the last of those in the drought and uh, I've always traded a few cattle and now we're just solely trading. When we had our breeding herd, we were always um, chewing the paddocks dried out, but now we're trading, I've noticed that uh, the pastures are doing, performing much better and the cattle are performing much better. Years ago, I did a little bit of an exercise on weighing cattle uh, on different pastures but that uh, takes up time taking them to the yards uh, regularly. But if I can do this in the paddock where they weigh themselves, that's going to save me a lot of time. So basically the OptiWay system allows us to gain weights from the cattle in the paddock. Um, we know that there's a production loss with having to take them into the yards to weigh. And how are you meant to know what your cattle are doing on the pasture, how they're performing when they're starting to plateau with their weight gain in the paddock? if we're not able to measure that in the paddock quickly and easy. So that's what these systems allow us to do. Now, um, some of you may be familiar with walkover weigh systems, which are used fairly extensive in northern industries. Um, generally, they, it's a system where you need to block off, and you'll see it a bit later, but you basically block off the animals so they have to walk through the scales and through a drafter, 
to access water, which works really well up in northern systems where you've got animals generally on a turkey nest from, from the day they're born on the water. Um, so they're used to having to walk through something to access water. Not such a good idea down here where cattle aren't used to doing that and it's something that has been a concern to us and our producers is if in the middle of summer we're putting a system like this in to gain weight data in the paddock and we're blocking the cattle off from water, what sort of catastrophes could we potentially be introducing to those animals that don't want to walk through into the system? So the aim of us doing this DigiFarm project with the OptiWay and the walkover way is to see how can these systems work in our area? Is there a commercial application for them? Can we get a re return on investment with this technology within the Northwest systems? Um, so our first site is Moores Creek site um, with Ron Ison. So Ron bought in 127 trade heifers. They were bought in one load, all from the same vendor. So really good, consistent, even line of heifers, sort of ideal for what, what we were chasing. Um, what they went on to was an eight paddock rotation, all with subtropical pastures. Um, what was interesting at Ron's was these first three first four paddocks, one, two, three, four, were subtropicals, digit panic mostly remaining now, but they were sown on the back of good rainfall with good follow-up rainfall, so they had almost ideal conditions for establishment, whereas the, the paddocks that he called Stony 1, 2 and 3, which is paddock 6, 7 and 8 on this diagram, were set up on the back of rainfall and then the, the summer rainfall didn't come through and so they, these pastures have continued to struggle. And something that Ron noted was really interesting was that the paddocks that had trouble getting established to start with have never caught up, even in good years, and we really noted that this year. There just isn't the same plan establishment. They've really struggled, and those stony paddocks that had trouble getting started initially are now competing against a lot of native species, liver seed, buffalo, and other things that have come in. So um, Ron has taken that as to note for himself, and something that we can let other producers know is if he doesn't get the follow-through rainfall and it's not predicted, he won't take the punt again on planting on the back of rainfall without knowing that there's a good chance that the rain's going to keep coming to get establishment because long term with those pastures, they're never going to reach the same point. Um, so this is the weight data that we get out of OptiWay when we go into the system. So you can see the red line here is your average daily gain. Um, these lines here, the green is the rolling five day average for the animals that are in the group. Um, your blues are your raw weight in kilograms. Down here we see a weight count, so that just tells us how many weights has the system achieved each day. Um, Bill, who developed the OptiWay system, said if you can get about 15% reading, that's enough to get a good average over the group. Um, at RONS, we were getting up to 90%. We were getting really, really good attendance with these young animals. They were really inquisitive. And when we get, get the video loaded, you'll see the day that we put it in, within about 20 minutes, they were using the unit. Um, but why I've got this on here, you'll recall that this last summer was pretty good one for some good storms, um, particularly around that Moores Creek area. And something that we picked up, which we weren't anticipating picking up, was that every negative in weight gain that you can see here where ADG falls into the negative category can be linked to a rain event that occurred within that time period. Um, so something that we've picked up, which was really interesting from Ron's site, is the impact of weather events on daily gain. And I'll show you some of our pasture data we've got here, but we should be anticipating reasonable growth rates in these heifers um, with the pasture quality at the time. But they really, you can see here, they're just ticking along. They weren't tracking well. So it's been interesting to, to see these weather events. And I've actually, thankfully, Ron keeps a really good diary. Um, so we were able to, to jot out all the dates. So this bit of a first dip that you see here, this was uh, five heat days where we had over 40 degree days. So you can see that's had an impact, but it hasn't been terrible. The cattle have recovered not too badly. And then in this period here, around the 3rd of December, um, we had... Big hail storm went through. It was quite a nasty storm out at Moores Creek. Um, a lot of hail in the paddock, 32 mils of rain. The pasture was decimated. What was left of the pasture got black tips. And we can see that this impacted them for quite a while before they started that ADG trend started to go up again. The next dip here, which we saw, um, was around the 21st of December, this one up here. So we had steady rainfall and storms through here. And then as we kept moving forward through these days, um, we can see here they're really not picking up. They're, they've not, the ADG is not declining again, but it's not going great. This is a five day period where we had steady rainfall totaling seven mils. So there wasn't a lot of rainfall, but it was enough to impact the ADG because the animals weren't wanting to go out and graze. The, the paddocks were soggy. 
they were basically going out, having a drink, having something to eat and lying back down again. They really weren't grazing more than they absolutely had to. And so we've really clearly seen the impact of weather on these animals. Um, and when we get here, I'll talk about this in a minute, but this was at a point of a paddock move um, and it was after all the rain and we had some um, mud and a couple of rocks get stuck in between the load bars and we actually ended up with a negative 18 reading um, for the tear weight on the, on the OptiWay. And so that, um, that really highlighted the importance of keeping an eye on the unit because we had to take a big chunk of the data out by the time we realised what was going on with those animals. So that was a, a big learning and something Ron had said from a commercial perspective with that, he said in the past, he would probably looked to book in his cattle after, a few weeks after rain, so he can get a few extra kilograms on them. And he said now, having seen that in the paddock real time, he'd be more inclined to book them in before the rain event and not risk losing those kilograms of, of weight on those animals. Um, so this is one of the paddocks that was primarily buffle. Um, so what we did, on the eight week rotation, we just did bi weekly. So every two weeks we went out and took a pasture cut from each paddock and noted down what, um, what paddock the animals were in. The idea was to see if we could pick up any trends with ADG and pasture quality in the paddock. Um, unfortunately, being um, cycling heifers, I think what we've picked up here with a minus 37, as you saw in the graph, they weren't going to be doing as well due to the weather. Um, and we would expect them with this quality pasture to be doing probably 1.2 to 1.5 kilograms a day. They weren't doing that, but I'm cautious to give you um, any gain data that we could anticipate from this paddock just because of this reason. This is another output, you get this in a daily email from OptiWay, and if you look at this output here, the high is 685 kilos. What we've picked up with the ADG in these readings is a cycling effect in the heifers. Um, so basically a heifer's walking into the OptiWay She's putting her head down to have a lick at the attractant and then another one's coming in to ride her, her ear tag's getting scanned and then we're getting a heifer plus a half in their weight gain. Um, so I was hoping to be able to give you some more data around that today but we're going to have to go through and remove the outliers from that so that we're not sort of skewing our data where we shouldn't be because we've got some extra heifers. But again, that's another cost of production is cycling heifers is the time that they spend riding versus um, actually eating. So this was another, um, another paddock here that we would, sorry, this is one we'd expect um, quite good production on. So this is sort of that ideal grazing period for these digit and panic um, pastures in a commercial operation. Uh, this is another one again, I've included the weight here, but we're at a minus 3.3. That's not the negative weight gain that we saw. That's not what was really happening in the paddock, but they weren't doing as well as they, they should have been doing um, in this paddock due to the rain effects. Um, we also didn't have enough mouths and it was interesting to see what Suze was talking about in her presentation about adding the 200 kilograms of N to get that bulk growth. But in a commercial sense, to my mind, unless you know you're going to have the animals there to actually chew it and keep it at that four to six leaf growth phase and really get the maximised potential out of those pastures, I'd be inclined to use 100 kilograms of N um, so that you're, you're getting the extra growth but you're not getting your pastures going too advanced and too rank because you just physically don't have the number of animals to eat. And that's, that's what we saw in, in these pastures out at Ron's place. And this is a good example. This was by the end of the grey, so early February, um, or mid-February, sorry. These, par these tropical pastures here, they had gone ahead, seeded, and as you can see, the quality has dropped out of them. We would expect these animals, even with a little bit of loosen, because Ron opened a paddock to loosen as well. Um, but as you can see, it's not... That's a little bit unclear, I'm sorry, but there wasn't a lot of leaf left on the loose and so it really wasn't doing much to help. But we would expect, even just being heifers, that this is only going to be good enough quality to maintain their body weight. So if you've got trade animals or growing animals that you've got on a pasture like this that's gone to head, um, you're really going to have to be supplementing something into that system to get any sort of performance from those animals. Otherwise, they're just going to be bobbing along. And if you get a rain event come through, they're potentially ducking into a negative, particularly once they get onto a pasture of that lower quality. Um, so we've had the University of Sydney out there as well, and they're um, trialling a lot of their new pasture sensors and readers, a lot of stuff that, to be honest, is a little bit above what I can get my head around at the moment, but we will have more information coming out. We're hoping to have a day um, out at the University Farms in September where they'll be able to present some of their research that's coming out with, with their technology as well. 
Site two was at um, Weres Creek in a cow-calf operation. So one of the questions we, we had and that we want to answer with this project is we know from Ron's place and from, from other people using it already within their own farm systems, OptiWay is great in trade environments and with growing stock. They're interested in it, they want to go to it, we can get really good information. Is there any return on investment in having this in a cow-calf unit? Was our question. Um, we had a lot of trouble getting these cows to actually attend it because they had plenty of feed there, they had their calves at foot, it was something they just weren't interested in. And I know with my own um, drone on our property at home, flying the drone around for the first time, the young ones were coming up to it having a sniff, you sort of had to watch they didn't bop it with their head. The older cows, as soon as they heard it, they were off down the paddock, they didn't want a bar of it and we found very much the same thing with these animals, um, with these cows and calves. The next step we're taking with this project, because we've basically found that no, the cows aren't going to attend it. The young ones, um, the calves did attend as they got a bit older and got a little bit more inquisitive, um, but still not awesome attendance. But we're now following through, they're retaining all of their heifers within that group. So we're following those heifers through and utilising the unit with them so that we can track weight gain and try to predict um, joining weights. How many will get to joining weights? How many won't? How can that influence our decision making? And then we're hoping to also, um, in the longer term, we're going to track these heifers through and keep the unit with them so that as they go to calve, we can see if by them having exposure to it as a calf themselves, are they going to be inclined to use it and therefore have their calves using it as they get older and can we get a return so that if we've got a farmer out there that buys it to use in his trade animals and then he sold off his trade, he's out of that deal, can he still get use from this system rather than it sitting in the shed collecting dust? Um, so that's going to be a longer term that we're quite, quite intrigued to see the results from on it. And our next site at Bogabri, um, we haven't had it out here very long, but we've got it out on a property out at Bogabri where they have ad lib loose slick available um, for, with their cattle all year, town, all year round in a, in a trailer. Um, so we wanted to see, because we're using a tractant in the OptiWay, um, are those cattle going to go to the OptiWay and the attractant that we have in it when they've got ad lib access to something else in the paddock that they're used to? And we got two answers from this. When the OptiWay is parked next to the trailer, yes, we get good attendance. Those animals are happy to go in there and have a leak, have their weight scanned, then go and have a look at the trailer and go and graze. When the units are put at opposite end of the paddocks, they won't attend the unit. They'll go to the trailer that they know and that is familiar. Um, so that was quite interesting just around some of the behavioural science of those animals with it in the paddock and how to actually get uptake from these animals. And this just shows you the, the reading. So this comes in an email every day so you can see as a percentage, the number of animals that have attended the unit in the last 24 hours versus over the whole session, the current weight, the average weight and the high weight. Um, and again, this is good to keep an eye on so you can see if there's anything a little bit off with your weights because that'll throw out your, your, your gain data. Um, and then it just gives you a summary as well over the last period of time so you can see what animals are doing. And that's without actually having to go into the OptiWay um, program. You can just have a quick look at that on your email. If you see something that's not quite right you know to go and look into it further when you've got the opportunity. And again, we are also able to dig into individual animal data with this. While we're not getting a read on every animal every day, if there's a specific animal you want to look at, you can go into the system and look at it. Um, we've got the NILS tag here. You can match that up to a visual ID so that it makes it easier for you in the paddock. Um, it'll give you the average weight of the animal, their, their current weight if it's available, how many times they've actually attended the units. We found some animals absolutely love going to it and there'll be hundreds of readings for them. Others, you might only get one or two readings and then they've, they've had enough. Um, overall average daily gain and how, how long they've been having that reading for. So when did they get their first reading versus today? So you can pull some individual animal data out of here, but it's very much a system used to look at the mob as a whole. Um, just some of the issues we've run into since having it in the paddock. Um, when we first put it in, the cattle were really inquisitive, which was fantastic, but it meant that they had a great time pushing it and rubbing it and digging around it and doing all those things we don't want them doing in a paddock. Um, so we ended up with this big dugout around it. So that was something that being conscious of where you put it in the paddock with them for the first time, probably don't put it in your, your freshly leveled um, irrigation paddock with them because you might be a little bit upset at the end of the day. Um, this is the lick, so within the unit there's this tub um, that, can, that can sit in, you can put loose lick in it, they find they get good, um, good attendance with a, 
molasses lick, which is what we've got here. Um, Ron was using, this is out at Ron's place, he was using a sulphur lick that he had in with his cattle. So we put that in with the molasses lick just to see what they went for. And even that was interesting in itself. They went for the molasses lick to start with and they got a bit sick of it, went back to the sulphur lick, back to the molasses. Um, but if you look at, your, look at the email that you're getting, you can actually see when there's a drop in attendance, we were able to pick up from that, that oh, it's time to go and change the lick. So if, we, if Ron wasn't out in the paddock checking it every day, we could see because attendance would wane and we get to a point where there was only a couple of animals going in. So we knew that it was time to change, change the lick or that they had run out. This is in the, in the box on the OptiWay, which I will show you on the video if I've got time. Um, shows you, um, this is just the, tells you what is happening with it. So this is where the, we had the min minus 18 kilograms. So we picked up with the ADG, something wasn't right. They were going backwards really quick, but it's not reflecting what we were seeing with the animals in the paddock. Um, so we just went and checked this and on further investigation, we'd had that mud and a bit of rock um, stuck up under the unit between the load bars. Minus 18, we lost about 10 days of data. Um, with this, which was disappointing, but it was good that we were able to take that out so that it didn't skew the entire data set for the whole period of time. So the next one we've got, and I'll see if this video is going to work for me, is the walkover way. So there's been a lot of interest in this area and using these systems, but again, you can see you've got your, your panels right around, the animals walk through here. Um, you've got your solar panel up the top with your reader, your panel readers here. They walk through, get weighed, reads their tag, they go through for a drink of water, they come back out again. Um, this is great because you can get a weight on every animal every day. So if you're doing trading or something where you're wanting to get a weight every day, this is the way to do it. Um, but we have been a little bit cautious with blocking off water. So it's not something I'd go into half-heartedly and you will need to be checking them consistently. University of Sydney is trying to develop an app at the moment, um, looking at getting really good user interface data back to the producer. So one of the things we've suggested for them is to have some alerts so that we've got an animal we're not getting a weight on. Um, you can get an alert to your phone and you know, well, that animal hasn't attended. It's either not drinking or it's not well in the paddock. So that's some of the things that we're working on them with. So you can just see they walk through one at a time, they get a weight, they have their drink and then they go back out again. What we found up at the Warriata site, um, which has been interesting, is this is a group of heifers that the walkover way system is in with and feedback from the producer is that it's, it's good he's enjoying getting the data, but he doesn't need a reading from every animal every day. That's kind of more data than he needs with this group of animals. So we were talking about, about this and an OptiWay would be more appropriate for his system where he can still track what's going on in the paddock without the labour and time and weight cost of bringing them in but without getting a lot of data that he isn't going to utilise with them at the moment. So that's the kind of trade-off we're looking at within our systems because we've got a lot of variable systems is what is the best utilisation, what's the best technology to invest in for your system. Let me just bring this back up. Um, so we have, a lot, I'm sure a lot of you are aware of Avendanos out at Bogabai do great things with, um, with their tropical pastures, but we've got this walkover way unit out there at the moment. It's currently in with um, yearling steer, steers. They're on digit and console, um, and they've got winter legumes underneath it as well, which is predominantly Ceredella, is my notes from Matt. They're not performing as well as Matt would like, which again, we've had a lot of rain, it's been cold, we're seeing a weather effect there. If they don't start to pick up, he'll supplement them as well, but he's being able to pick that up now in the paddock and track, track their gain. So this is the, the raw Excel output that you get from the walkover way data. So this gets sent through once a week. You've got your, you've got your summary up the top, um, which tells you your low, your low, your middle, sort of breaks it down into groups depending what you're wanting to look at. You've got your individual animals. One thing that we would like to be able to do with this is to have that individual ID so that we can match up um, visual ID tag with their NILS tag in the system. At the moment we can't do that, which is feedback from Matt, that's not very practical for him because he's looking at a visual tag when he goes into the pen. So he wants to be able to see that. Um, but again, you've got the beauty of every animal. You can go and see how many times they've attended, what's their current weight, What's their growth rate? Um, within this system, it gives you a, a dollar per head value. I'm not sure that that's necessarily something that would be used or very, very accurate depending what market you're going into. Um, so we kind of discount that. It also tells you when they've last been seen. So there's one in here, the 31st of the 5th. So if we're looking through this data and we're realizing 
we haven't seen that animal for seven days, it's probably time to go and have a look at it. And that's where an alert would be fantastic so that you're not waiting seven days, you know, within sort of a 24 to 48 hour period that that animal hasn't attended. So something's not right with it. Um, these are just the two graphs that come with the, with the WOW output. Um, so it shows you the number of animals per weight bracket. So you get a good sort of snapshot of what your animals are doing in the paddock. And then the number of animals per growth bracket. So we can see here um, with the mix that they're on, which was the, the digit, the console and the serradella, they're sitting at about 0.5 is the average, but that's going between 0.4 and 1.4 kilos a day. Um, and, a, and again, if they're a young, fresh growth, you'd expect a better performance than that. But I think we are seeing a weather effect out here as well. The walkover way is a lot more expensive. Um, so the OptiWay unit is about 15,000 Dale to buy. Um, whereas the walkover way, I think you're looking at roughly 60,000. It's quite a, quite a heavy investment. But then having spoken to, to Matt and we kind of, we proceeded with a lot of this project work. Matt was really keen a couple of years ago, Matt Avendano, to look at some of these systems in the Northwest. And his feedback at the moment is we are running, he feels that the OptiWay is good now, but once the walkover way in the System University of Sydney are working on in their software database, once that reaches a commercial point, he feels like that's gonna be the best use for their farming business. Um, and so it is again, that will be, have the better return on investment. The next step for the project out at Matt's place is we're actually going to have an OptiWay go out and be in the paddock with the walkover way. So we'll actually be able to compare the two systems side by side with the same group of animals under exactly the same conditions, um, which will be really interesting just to see what data output we get, what's the accuracy, what's really the benefits, what's the drawbacks of each and start to draw some good conclusions from that. Um, what was interesting to me, because I know there is a bit of wriggle in, in the data, but it was more interesting for me that within the day and within the days after, that's where we saw that negative gain. And when we went back over the diary, we saw we weren't looking for that weather effect. It's something that came out to us that each time we saw that dip, it was linked to a weather event that had occurred either on that date, the 24 hours before, and then in the days leading after it. Um, Bill that developed it's actually a commercial producer himself and developed it because he wanted to be able to weigh them in the paddock, so they have been conscious of trying to have as much commercial relevance as they can with it and to account for some of that. I'm not sure what level of, of accountability they've got with that, but it is built in as best they can at this point. But again, it's, it's not perfect, but it's, um, it's good to have it. And that's why they do the rolling average. It's not just for the one day. So they've got a rolling five day and 10 day. He says the five day is the best to be looking at, but they do do it a rolling average over the 10 days as well. It, they walk in and then the scales are at the front, they, it weighs the front, fr front feet and then it extrapolates out the body weight. There's a lot of science come out of um, America that shows that there is incredible accuracy in doing the body weight that way. And particularly at Ron's as well, when he was bringing them in for vaccinations, we got weights on them all as well and correlated that back to the most recent weight we had on the animals. And it was, it was accurate because that was one of our things was how accurate is it? Yeah, so I'd say from, from what we've seen with these pasture cuts we've done for this round, it was only on an eight week cycle. We saw the animals weren't performing as well as they were. So with some of the pasture cuts we took, those pastures were at their peak productivity, but we still weren't seeing the weight gain we'd anticipate, which brings me back to the weather effects that we were seeing at the time is what we've sort of attributed that to. Um, I, th I think that's it, but that's part of it. I was hoping to have more of that here, but then discovering some of those outlying weights, um, which I can only attribute to the cycling behaviour of the heifers. I think if we're able to get the data set and pull those out, we might be able to look more closely and get more accurate figures. Um, but it's, it's, and that's the risk, it's not an exact science, whereas we're trying to find the complement with what you guys do at one end and what we do. So um, just from what we went through, we sort of sat down after we'd gone through that, that first eight weeks I showed you with the graph and planned out a plan. So what he did was took the heaviest animals within the group and then he spoke to his agent, he got those booked in and then turned those off first, went to the next group. So as he said, look, they looked like a nice even group in the paddock um, and he'd said I probably would have booked them all in together. So that was the first thing that he decided was he was actually able to split it up, get rid of the heavier animals. And then he was looking at potentially supplementing the younger animals as well to get them up to weight gain as well. He wasn't in any great rush to turn them off because he had excess feed um, that was there. In terms of longer term management, um, he had said about 
informing his decisions better in terms of actually selecting the animals when to sell them with, with the weather and that that was coming through as well. So that was his biggest thing was just that knowledge in the paddock of, of when to do it and more informing around timing um, of either buying in or selling based on what, what data was coming through. But Ron found it very valuable because he had tried a few years ago with bringing the animals in to weigh them frequently to get that data and he said that was a, a limiting um, opportunity for him to do that just because of the time and cost factor that we all know with bringing animals in a lot. So yeah, he'd found a lot of value in just having the knowledge around that. He also, the other big learning for him was we knew that there was a weather effect. He hadn't anticipated quite how long that would impact them for, particularly on the days where it was that steady rainfall over a period of days. Um, we sort of didn't anticipate that that would have as much impact on them as it did have. And we saw that in the paddock in the quality of the animals dropping as well. Um, so, um, how long do you expect to get his money back on the initial investment? With the unit? Yeah. We haven't run those figures yet. We actually supplied the unit, um, but that's something we're going to be looking at, at doing. But Ron had said to me when we were first talking about the project and about potentially having the OptiWay out there, that he'd had a mob of um, trade steers a few years ago that he'd sold and by the, when he sold them, he had about 30%, I think it was, had fallen out of the weight bracket. He said, this unit, I would have recovered my cost on that within that trade. Um, so he could very much see the value in the unit. And that seems to be what we're hearing from the people that have gone out and bought the unit themselves is the knowledge they're gaining and of what's actually in the paddock and being able to utilise that to book in and fit within grids and not have animals falling outside of grids is really paying for the unit very quickly. And you, you do have the option with the walkover way to go over and plug your stick in and pull that data off if you want to. Um, so if you're talking to the agent and you've only got a week or two week ago's data, you can go and collect that yourself from the unit. Um, it's just not coming to you in that package format. Yeah, and that's what they do up north. They've got them hooked up to automatic drafting units and you input your specs and the animals get drafted out. So that's, um, they're using a lot for weaning. So then you're drafting off your weaners, you're holding them in a holding paddock. Cows are going back out, you bring the truck in and then the calves get taken to where they've got to go to. So they are utilising that as well. Yeah, well, you can be proactive about it. One thing we're trying to pick up, which is in our longer term plans, what we're hoping to do is to actually be able to monitor them on the pasture and see when that plateau is starting to come so that you can pull them out. You're not set, waiting to see it in the paddock and seeing them drop in condition to think, oh, I need to move them or seeing your pastures decline. You can track it with their weight gain and, and the weight of the animals and say, all right, well, it's time to, time to move to another paddock or time to start su supplementing or whatever that decision may be.